Have you ever wanted to create a cool parallax effect like all the award-winning websites? Well, guess what? You can do this in Framer with zero code. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that easily. Yo, what's going on? My name is Ryan. I'm a Framer mentor and I'm here to help you level up using Framer and become more valuable as a designer. Now, just like any sort of parallax effect, whether we're building in Webflow, Framer or another tool, we essentially want to like create these layers with uh, elements that are going to be higher or lower than something else. So this kind of effect that I want to create here, we've got some mountains, we've got some clouds. So that means that the clouds are going to be on top of the mountain. And I want to put some text in there as well. So I want to sit that behind the mountain so it will actually disappear as we scroll. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my desktop here and we're going to add a new frame. And we're going to set the width of this to be 100%. And let's just set a height of 1200 pixels for now. This will probably change later on. And let's call this content because this is where I'm going to put all my content. Next, let's add a background. So I'm going to add a gradient and we're going to go from blue all the way to orange. And let's just rotate that so it's the right way. Awesome. Now let's drag in our uh, mountain. And again, we're going to make sure that the width is set to 100%. And what I'm going to do is actually set a layout of this content layer here. Now, this isn't going to stay uh, the mountain and how it's actually placed. So at the moment, this layout is everything is set to centered, which means no matter what, I can try to drag this around. Everything's always going to come back to the center. But I actually want this mountain to be stuck to the bottom. Uh, but I don't actually want to have it affected by this parent frame that it's in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that frame with the mountain in it. And I'm going to change the positioning to absolute. So now I actually have more freedom and control over how this uh, mountain is positioned. So we're going to deselect this and we're going to make it so it's going to be positioned to the bottom. So now it's uh, with the ruling that we've set up here, it's always going to be zero pixels from the bottom of this frame. So now that I've got my mountain in, let's add some clouds. So I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times and you'll notice that I can't see my clouds, right? Like they're kind of here, but they're kind of behind this mountain I have set. So similar to what we just did before, I am going to set the positioning to absolute. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to set the Z index to be two. Now, the reason why this cloud has now appeared on top of the mountain is because the Z index on this mountain is set to one. And this is essentially where we start looking at how we create these layers of elements on the page that stack either higher or lower than something else. So essentially higher the Z index, the higher it's going to appear within your layers on your page. Uh, so even though it's not affected by the layers on the left hand side here, visually it's showing higher than the mountains because this cloud has a Z index of two and the mountains have a Z index of one. Now, just like before, I can kind of drag this cloud to wherever I want it to be. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And we can also set the positioning on this. So as I kind of scale uh, my browser here, you'll notice that the positioning of the cloud is changing. Now we can actually set this to center. So if we just click in the middle here, uh, so we just get this little circle, you'll notice as I scale, it doesn't actually change its positioning at all. And again, let's duplicate this and let's do another one as well. So we'll make sure that's within the layer here. And let's put this down here and make it a little bit bigger. Okay, great. And we'll make sure that that's all sent to the center in terms of positioning as well. So lastly, I want to have some text. So let's just add some text to the content frame and we'll go, ain't no mountain high enough. Great. Now you'll notice by default, uh, this is number one set to the center because that's the layout we've decided within this content frame. Uh, but it's also appearing behind this mountain. And even though that doesn't have a Z index that we can set here, by default, no matter what, it's always going to be zero. So because this mountain is one, that means it's going to be higher than everything else. And the text is still set to zero on the page. So what we'll do is we'll set the width of this to be 350 pixels. 
actually maybe a little bit more, let's say 600. And we're actually going to change the layout of this content. Now you'll start to see the absolute kind of come into show here because what will actually happen is uh, because the clouds and the mountain are set to absolute positioning and everything, as, and everything else is set to a relative positioning, if I set the distribution to start, you'll see the only thing that is affected is this text. And that's because the text positioning is set to relative, meaning it's essentially uh, relative to the, to the content that it's in, which is this content frame here. So let's style our text. Let's make the alignment to the center. Let's keep the weight as bold, but let's add my favorite font, fig tree. And let's reduce this line spacing too. And maybe we can add a little bit more width so everything fits on two lines. Now, because I want this text to come down just a little bit, I'm gonna add some padding to the top of about 80 pixels. Let's try 100, great. And I still feel like everything's kind of a little bit too spaced out. And I actually want this mountain to just slightly overlap this text on page load. So what I'm gonna do is actually just size everything up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now I can start to style my elements however I want them. And since I've already kind of set everything up with the right uh, styling and positioning, it's pretty easy to kind of mix things around and get them exactly how I want them to feel. Like, I think that's pretty good. Maybe we can make this text a little bit bigger. Let's go 92. And again, let's change the width to be 800. Yeah, that looks great. So when I press preview, like you could see, like nothing's happening yet, but we've almost created this sort of like layer effect already where we've got these individual assets on top of other assets. So what we're gonna do so we can actually achieve this effect of this parallax is we're just gonna add in another random section just so we can actually see what happens when we actually scroll. So again, by default, nothing is happening here when we add our scroll, but now we can actually add this parallax effect. And to do this, there's a couple of different ways. The main way you'll do this is by using an effect called scroll speed. So for example, if I want this text to scroll slower than everything else on the page, which means the mountains and the clouds are essentially going to uh, scroll a lot faster than text, then we're gonna create this parallax effect where everything's kind of like off balance in terms of the speeding of the scroll. And it will essentially just create the effect that we want. So we'll select that text, we'll go to effects, and we'll click on scroll speed. Now, if I make this speed 50%, that means everything else is going to uh, scroll at normal speed, but this text is going to scroll at 50% the speed. So half the time uh, it usually would, or sorry, twice the time it usually would. So now as I scroll, you'll notice that the text is a lot slower than everything else on the page. So already we kind of have this parallax effect in place. And there's a lot we can kind of do here. We can make it so the position is uh, current or on scroll. We can also make the speed faster if we want. So this means that it will scroll a lot faster than everything else on the page. But for us to actually create this overlay parallax effect, we want the speed to be slower than everything else. Now for the clouds, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're going to use scroll transform because I actually want them to animate in a slightly different way. So for us to do this, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to select this content frame. We're gonna go down on the right and we're gonna add a scroll section. And we're going to call this uh, scroll. Now, essentially by defining this as a scroll section, it gives us a lot more functionality within the effects panel to actually manipulate these objects. So let's select this first cloud, for example. Let's go down to effects and we're going to click on scroll transform. Now I can set the trigger to section in view, meaning when this section is in view, it will do this effect. And I can make it go from the top of the section to the bottom of the section, uh, it will play an effect. So if we start from the from state, so the very first state it's gonna start at, and we'll keep the opacity and scale at one but we're going to set the offset on this to the X axis to be a hundred like that. And then we're gonna set the two ones. So it's gonna go from a hundred to negative a hundred. And we can add a transition here to make it spring a little bit more and be a little bit smoother. 
And then finally, the most important thing here is to make sure that this animation is set to our scroll section. So now if I press preview, you'll notice that as I scroll my page, it will actually animate that cloud from right to left. And we can do the same with this cloud down here. Again, all we need to do, click on effect, go to scroll transform. I'm gonna make it that when the section is in view, it's going to, on this section, start from uh, this state and it's going to go to this state of, let's go a little bit more, 250X. So it's gonna go from left to right and we're gonna add a slight spring in this one too. So now you can see as I scroll, not only is the text going behind the mountain, but we can also animate these other elements on the page to do what we want as well. So in a nutshell, that's how you create a parallax effect in Framer. Now you can tell how powerful this can be. And if you spend a lot more time in it, you can create some really incredible stuff.